Hello, hello, welcome back. I am Carl Sussman and you are tuned in to Insurance Hour. This is our final segment. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Hopefully you've learned a ton from everyone else's questions that they've been asking. If you haven't tuned in yet and you're just joining us, we have been going over listener emails and there have been some good ones in here. A lot of information, a lot of good information. If you've missed some of it, Go back, grab this as a podcast. You can find it everywhere online. Go to YouTube, you can catch it there as well. Get this information, lots of good stuff here. If you wanna send in your own question, please feel free to do so. You can email questions at insurancehour.com. You can also call 559-656-0317. If you wanna talk to an insurance agent right now, right now, just dial pound 250, use keyword insurance, and you'll be connected with an insurance broker that can help you right away. All right, let's go on. Let's get through these questions. Got a couple more and I'm gonna power through them for you and let's see what we got. All right, is it legal to have, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand this question. I think what they're trying to say, is it legal to not have car insurance? But that's not what they said, but it's, I think that's the question. So is it legal to not have auto insurance? And the answer is yes, believe it or not. Now. Different states have different laws about what you need in order to drive, right? And what most of us see is, well, it's mandatory to have auto insurance. Well, it turns out that it's not actually auto insurance that's mandatory. It's some type of financial backing. So if you don't want to purchase an auto insurance policy, you can post a bond, for example, for, depending on the state, a certain amount of money. So let's say you're looking to purchase an auto insurance policy. You just want the bare, bare bones. You just want to be legal, right? And you look around and it's expensive. You don't want to do it. You can post a bond, which is significantly less expensive than buying an insurance policy. And you can satisfy the financial requirement of your state by having that bond. Now, I'm not licensed in every state, so I can't speak to this with complete certainty, but I can tell you that all states have requirements on how much of a bond or how much financial backing you have to have. And I don't see any that I'm aware of that will not accept the bond in lieu of an insurance policy. Is this done frequently? No. Is it just sort of little nerd insurance trivia? Yeah, probably, but it can be done. The point is I want you to understand that the law doesn't mandate an insurance policy which is what some people think, they think, oh, this is not fair, I'm forced to have to buy insurance, there's collusion, there, you know, if I if the, the law makes me buy something from a private company, that's not fair. Okay, you don't have to. You can follow another path and you can post a bond and satisfy that same requirement if you want. There you go. I'm pretty sure that's what the question was. It's worded a little bit strangely, so, uh, I, I, but I think that's what they were getting at. All right, next question, let's go for it. Can I purchase life insurance and die? Well, I guess I can look at this one of two ways. One, are they talking about committing suicide, which is a horrible thing, or is are they talking about purchasing a policy and then perhaps legitimately dying soon thereafter, whether in, a, in an accident or, or for some illness? First, if uh, anytime I mention the word suicide, please call your local suicide hotline. If you are feeling anywhere near that level, please, please. It is not worth it. You want to stay with us. Believe me, you want to stay with us. However you're feeling now is not how you're going to feel tomorrow. So reach out and get help if you need it. Moving from the, on from that, the way life insurance works, there's something called an, an, an incontestability period, okay? This is a period of time when no matter what happens, the life insurance carrier must pay out. It's usually two years. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because once that period of time passes, it doesn't matter if you lied about your age, your health. It doesn't matter if you lie about your a about your sex, male or female. It doesn't matter. After two years, if you're paying that premium, the life insurance company, with very few exceptions, has to pay a death claim. So what happens during that two-year period? Well, that two-year period is there to give a little bit of protection it really is for the insurance carrier because they'll go through the process of underwriting. They'll check medical records. They'll ask questions. They'll do all of these things, but there's really only so much they can know. So if there is a death that occurs within the first two years of a life insurance policy, the likelihood is they're going to want to do a little bit of research to be sure that that application was filled out 
completely and accurately. Are they looking for an excuse not to pay? I wouldn't go that far. I would say that because the likelihood of somebody dying shortly after purchasing a life insurance policy does raise red flags, they're going to do some extra due diligence. Yeah, I think I'm just smoothing that one out. It doesn't make me happy, okay? It definitely doesn't make me happy. But that's typically what'll happen. I actually dealt with one of these myself as an agent. I had written a policy on a client and I believe four months later, five months later, uh, her boyfriend came into her house with a shotgun, shot her, killed her, killed himself, but not before setting the house on fire. It was traumatic, right? Uh, and I got a call from the daughter of the insured and she told me what happened. And of course I was devastated and I told her, please come in right away, we should talk. I called the insurance company and of course, the first thing out of their mouth was, oh, well, this is in the two year incontestability period. I said, yes, I understand it is. Uh, tell me what you wanna do because the daughter would really like to get her money and be done. And this was not in front of the, the daughter, by the way. Turns out I was all I had to do was show them a clipping from the newspaper that showed what had happened to this person. And when they saw that's what happened, they realized there was nothing self, they, they didn't do something to themselves, right? It wasn't like all of a sudden they died of cancer the next day that they hadn't disclosed it. This was obviously something that they were not aware of and they were not planning and it happened. So the insurance carrier did the right thing. They released funds and I was able to give it to the client's daughter uh, within a couple of days. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's a horrible thing when you have something like that happen. But let me tell you something. When, you're, when you have a life insurance policy and everyone is upset because someone has died and you're the one person that shows up and you've got a check, as a broker and an agent, I can tell you that that kind of feels good. You know, you, you walk in there and everyone's angry and sad and hurt and upset. And then here comes the guy with money. You know, that's just human nature. So I am a, I, I do believe in life insurance. So that's uh, for what that's worth because I, I have been through that process of delivering a check. So I can tell you. Listen, that's all the time we have. We did not even get through all of the questions. There were so many good ones. We will try and get caught up and review some more questions next time. So if your question did not get answered, don't worry, we will get to it. You have my word. If I have to start doing the show more often, I will. We will get your question answered. I am again, Carl Sussman. You've been listening to or watching Insurance Hour. I thank you so much for being here. Remember, you can reach me anytime, 559-656-0317 or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com and I will talk to you before you know it. Take care. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559-656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians, one insurance policy at a time, this is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.